Okay, we were just looking at this, this particular question as part of the non-uniform rods that we were looking at here. However, there is something that if you started this question that you can't solve it until we understand this sentence. The rod is on the point of tipping about D. So you might like to do this question um, after you've done the next few questions, which is about on the point of tipping. So you will see here, the next little subtitle is on the point of tilting or tipping. And really this is gonna take me like no time to talk about at all. This is just adding in one more idea that we've got, okay? Um, please don't write this bit down because it doesn't relate to this particular question at the moment. No, okay, let's, let's do it with this question instead. Let's actually do this question and we can, we'll figure out what it means when we go halfway through the question. So it says a uniform rod AB of length four meters and mass 12 kilograms, so it's uniform here, uh, is resting on a horizontal position on the supports at C and D with AC being equal to DB being equal to 0.5. So I'm just gonna start drawing that to begin with. We've got our AB, uh, 12 kilograms, so it's bang in the middle because it's uniform. And the whole thing is four. So actually at the end, we've got AC, that's 0.5 meters. And we've got AD, so that's 0.5 meters. We're gonna have a normal reaction here which is RC, and we're gonna have a normal reaction here, which is RD. Now let's read the next part. It says when a part... Oh, thank you. When a particle of mass m kilograms is placed on the rod at point B, the rod is on the point of turning about D. So there is a mass m here, which is being placed, and this is the new bit that we need to talk about. It is... Uh, the rod is on the point of turning or on the point of tilting, but I'm going to highlight this because this is the most important part about D. So what this means that's going to happen here is it's resting on two supports like this, okay? This, uh, my right hand is C and my left hand is D. If it is on the point of tilting about D, that's because there's a mass that's being placed at this end. Hamza, would you just come and stand up here so you can just do something for me, okay? So in this scenario, this hand here is C, this one is D, and Hamza is gonna push down like he's the mass at B, and you're gonna see what will happen. So that's it tilting about D. Now can he just, if he just presses it enough, just press it enough so that it doesn't tilt, but it's on the point of tilting. So get it so it's like resting on that hand, but it's, it's just about to start moving if you put any more weight there. What can you tell me about this hand here? Oh, there's no thing on it anymore. No. There's, there's no reaction there at all because it's about to move. It's touching it. It's touching the top of my finger, just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but pushing, basically not. The pushing down is the same as that, probably not. Yeah, so there's it's essentially, if it's on the point of tilting, I can remove that and it's still in equilibrium, okay? That's, that's what we've got in this scenario that we have here. So on the point of tilting, thank you very much for that, Hamza. On the point of turning or tilting about D actually means that this isn't there and we can effectively ignore all of this thing. So the only thing that's happening is it's now only got a normal reaction at the point RD. So whichever the point it's turning about, obviously that still needs to have a normal reaction because it's the point that it's resting on, but it's no longer touching any of the other points. It's not turning, but it's about to turn. So those normal reactions elsewhere have become zero. And that's what I've written down here. When a rigid body is on the point of tilting about a pivot, the reaction at any other support or tension, I mean, if it was a wire or a string, becomes zero. So if it's on the point of tilting, everything else is zero apart from the pivot point. Now, I don't really like a diagram that's drawn like that with the scribbles on it, so I'm going to draw it again. I'm not even going to bother doing anything to do with C because it's got nothing in the question. It's stupid. It's useless now. It means nothing. So I'm gonna just say that I've got a pivot point here, which is D. There is a normal reaction. I don't even need to call it RD anymore just because it's, it's gone. I, I mean, if I had this diagram, I could have just said RC is equal to zero, but whatever, I'm just gonna call it R. I've still got 12G because it's uniform, and I've still got MG here. This distance is 0 0.5. The whole thing is four meters. So what's it from here to here? 1.5. So this little extra bit of the, the rod now is 
It doesn't really do anything. Um, I want to find out the value of M. What am I going to do to find out the value of M? Best strategy, please. No. Good. Moments about D is the best strategy. Because if I take moments about D, I won't use R. So I'm just going to do 12G times 1.5 equals 0.5 MG. So I get, cancelling the Gs out, I get uh, 12 times 1.5 is 18. 18 equals 0 0.5 M. So M is 36 kilograms. Okay. So when now we have when things are on the point of tilting or the point of turning, all the other reactions or tensions are zero. That is now the rest of this whole booklet. So you can, in theory, go back to do this previous question here. It's on the point of tipping about C. So that means that the tension in C is zero and can be completely ignored when you draw the diagram for that second question. The other thing I'll point out before you do any of these questions is this first question makes no sense at all because it says it's got a length of four metres, but one of them is five. <laughs> so we're not going to do that question. You can do these questions, and the answers are down here. And then you've got how many questions after that? The board has given up and is not responding. But you've got some exam questions and the rest of the booklet to do. And everything in this booklet needs to be completed for homework. If you can get it all done now, then you can just spend your half term doing revision homework stuff instead. OK? So you've got one, two, three questions. That's it. Good.